My name is Mike Haig, and I'm the project director of an operation called Rec Hunters, which sets out to teach the skills and disciplines of diving archaeology in the crystal clear waters of the Caribbean, on a wreck in 18 metres of water, which we have come to know as the Oliver. So, if you have an interest in the past, if you want to learn more skills, if you're interested in all this type of thing, then this could well be the type of operation and course you're interested in getting involved in. So, what I'll be doing in our first video is going through the course as we see it and the type of skills that you will learn with us. Where better to learn the craft skills of marine archaeology than the warm blue waters of the Caribbean? The tiny Honduras island of Utila is the uncrowded destination for our project, Wreck Hunters. Here, just a short distance from golden sandy shores, lie the skeletal remains of an 18th century wreck. It's an ideal site to investigate. Divers hunting for treasure discovered the wreck known as the Oliver in the 1970s. The team only struck gold in the sense that they'd found a historical treasure, not one of any great financial value. One man with a passion for diving is the driving force behind the project. Mike Haig has an impressive track record in diving archaeology under his belt and was inspired to start Wreck Hunters as a way of creating a course which covers all the essential training required to learn the art of marine archaeology, a kind of underwater university. We are indeed a unique opportunity for people to learn the skills of diving archaeology in an environment which is not stressful but it gives the opportunity to work on a real wreck, a real time capsule, and help us unravel the secrets of this wreck site. The beauty of the Oliver wreck is this. For the past 50 years, she has been ignored. The diving on the island is devoted simply to training people to dive. The wreck site is untouched. The techniques of 50 years ago are nowhere near the techniques of now. So we can use modern methods to tell a full story and find out about the wreck in more detail. It is also quite likely that the initial expedition did not uncover all of the wreck and therefore there are probably more things to be found. To help unravel these secrets, Mike's enlisted a team of experts, among them Dr. Toby Parker, an internationally acclaimed marine archaeologist. He's led numerous archaeological expeditions, mainly in Europe. He also pioneered marine archaeology as an undergraduate course, and latterly a master's degree course, in a subject to which he's dedicated his professional life. Marine archaeology uh, teaches us that there's almost no limit now in time into which we can look back to find out that people were venturing onto the sea in boats or on rafts, uh, or perhaps just in swimming, and using the sea's resources to help feed them. Uh, and indeed from this came many of the earliest contacts between humans and as yet uncolonized eras of the world and between different human groups and traditions. So that marine archeology span is now right at the, at the cutting edge of all these interesting questions about the early development of culture. Since the earliest times, we have paddled, sailed across the oceans to find out what was there and to carry out trade and to bring in goods and materials. Maritime archaeology tells us how this was done. It gives us an insight into the vehicles and the people that were involved in these activities. It is, in effect, the physical evidence of man's capacity to deal with challenges 
to achieve the things he wishes to achieve. Nearly 50 years ago, the Utila dive team managed to recover a wide range of cultural artifacts, many of which were brought to the surface using air lifting gear. Here, one of the original expedition team members, Austrian diver Gunter Kordowski, who remains on the island to this day, records one of the many finds. Others included pottery, glass objects, a 12-inch pewter plate, ship fittings, and of course, a cannon, now on show on the island. The wreck for me gives us an opportunity to go back 50 years to that time when the wreck was first found and to do a proper excavation job on the wreck to answer the questions which were not answered then about where she was going, where she was from, what was she constructed of, what she was carrying, who were the people on this wreck? What happened to them? All these questions can be done. Questions that can be answered by learning the essential tools of the marine archaeology trade. Such methods vary and today may include the use of a powered scooter or the more sophisticated deployment of a metal detector. Surveying the site will likely include a grid construction, baseline positioning and more commonly these days the use of video cameras with the possible end result of a photo mosaic, such as this one. Recording techniques are also important. Perhaps one of the most significant elements of the work is excavation of the site. Here a diver is using a scaffold frame, followed by the use of an underwater vacuum. Basic tools are used to remove artefacts where necessary. In the event of the recovery of an anchor, a lifting bag is usually the best solution. These techniques and many more can easily be learned, especially for trained scuba divers. I think that it's true to say, and has been said before, that uh, you can, it's easier to uh, teach a, a diver about archaeology um, and better than it is to teach an archaeologist to dive. Which is why Utila is the perfect location for a course that provides the inspiration and right learning environment for someone with ambitions in the world of marine archaeology. It's no mean feat to actually make a, to make a success of yourself in, in, in marine archaeology. So you need to be a really hard worker. You need to be prepared to do repetitive work. There, there is a lot of repetitive, practical, hard work, but the rewards are huge. The course represents a fantastic opportunity on a number of different levels. There are, of course, the archaeologists, who will learn to improve their skills and use these on more important sites going forward. There are the volunteers who will also learn skills and go forward to other sites. But there are many who will come and learn the skills but will leave enriched by having a greater diving experience and will leave with improved diving skills. I would also expect that this will not be the end of the story. We will be looking to continue our training efforts in other locations and indeed we would hope to look for other wrecks in the area of Utila and the Bay Islands. I can't think of many people who could manage to run, actually set up and run a course in such a remote place and um, turn it into a successful learning academy. Um, I'm convinced this is what Mike will do. So the Wreck Hunters project, which aims to start in the summer of 2021, offers nothing short of a unique opportunity for people who want to take their love of all things historical underwater to the next level. I hope you enjoyed the introductory video. And who knows, perhaps one day we'll bump into each other in Nutella. In the interim, Please do have a look at our website, www.reckhunters.co.uk. I wish you all enjoyable and safe diving.